Hello lovely people, it's Cara here and I am so, so mad and I feel quite royal at the moment because I have moved into the summer residence of videoing. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the sun is shining, spring is, well, sprung, which is lovely um, and hopefully summer is on its way. <gasps> so exciting. I wish you could see the scene here because this is my lovely summer house. Oh. I confess we have not been in here for um, a number of months because it's been super cold um, and you know summer houses are a major investment but on moments like this worth every penny and I wish you could see it my feet here I have a whip it in the sunshine she has found the Sun and she is staying there it's just a beautiful thing to behold on this side of my summer house is the bike half so I actually do have a full-size bike in here um, with a turbo trainer and a fan and all sorts. It's a multi-use space, <laughs> which is fair. So today I'm very excited to bring to you a pattern review um, and general sort of impressions of Jolie Lab, um, which is a French pattern company um, that I came across in my research for um, the Create the Look French style um, and once again thank you for all your love on that I will leave a link to that video or a card or something so that you can um, reach out and watch that um, lots of inspiring pictures predominantly from Cezanne um, which is a independent French company that have just the loveliest style sort of Bowdoin but um, in, in France that sort of thing and Jolie Lab, um, I actually, um, I can't confess that I heard of Jolie Lab before seeing it on Alex Judge Sews. So hi Alex, thank you for the inspiration. Um, she has, uh, she's made a couple of, I uh, well no, she's talked about a couple of items from Jolie Lab. Um, and um, yeah, I've just really liked them and sort of went down a bit of a rabbit hole um, to seek um, some more ideas and inspiration from them. And I have, which is very exciting. Now, in true YouTuber style, I did actually film an unboxing. I don't know what happened to the footage, so I am sad, sad to say that the post that uh, arrived from the Jolie Lab, um, all the way from Lyon, I believe, in France, um, I filmed an unboxing of the um, of the post of the patterns that I'm going to talk to you about, and have promptly lost that footage. So I just thought I'd share with that with you. It's probably not that useful, but I can reassure you that. Um, you get a, it, it, it came pretty quickly um, all the way from Leon um, I say pretty quickly it's about a, a week or so um, but both companies have had various things going on um, with postal strikes and so on um, so yeah it's been a difficult time but nonetheless um, their communication about when the po um, when the post was coming was excellent and it's actually tracked through La Poste um, which is obviously the French, um, the French postal system and um, so it was amazing so I knew exactly when it was coming which was phenomenal and you get in the pack um, came with a lovely postcard um, it shows here uh, which has got Jolie Love create love and do it yourself on the front which is beautiful and then on the back you got merci which is super so yeah um, yes obviously thank you which is lovely and uh, just really nice touches and then you get um, a beautiful little leaflet um, as well, which is obviously the, the pattern instructions. And then what I think is super cute is you also get a, a lovely little um, label to put into your Mead Made garments, which I think is a lovely touch. And that says Jolie Lab on there. So, ah, oh, I was so excited um, to, yeah, to, to get involved um, uh, and, and order some patterns from the Jolie Lab and there were so many different patterns to choose from I'm actually going to put a screenshot recording here of their website just to give you an idea of the beautiful range of patterns that they have um, and I found it pretty hard to choose actually um, at, when I was researching um, they were three for two on their PDFs uh, I'm not sure if that still offer is still running 
but if it is, it will be on their website. Um, the patterns, I, well, one of the patterns I chose actually is paper um, format only, hence why I needed it to come from, um, from France. Um, and therefore I, I decided to order both of my patterns in paper format, because um, it seemed a bit pointless getting one pattern um, you know, posted and one on a PDF, but I ordinarily would do PDF. So, so the two patterns I chose um, out of an amazing selection, let me just get the other one out here. Um, let me just grab this for you a second. Sorry, I should have done that before. Um, so just put that back there like that. So the, the one that um, drove, uh, well, inspired me to want to get it posted uh, was La Premier Blues, um, and I apologise for my pronunciation, but I do like to try and, um, you know, there are accents involved in other languages, so I do like to try and incorporate that if I can. So La Premier Blues is um, my first blouse, um, and it is just lovely. It's a very simple neckline. Now, if you saw my recent footage from the knitting and uh, the, sorry, the stitch festival, um, you'll see I actually wore this blouse. So this will come as no surprise to you that I'm featuring it today. But it's a lovely raglan sleeve, um, a beautiful cuff detail, which is so simply created. And it's actually got a faux button placket um, down the front as well. Now, let me tell you some of the details, which sometimes I do miss out. And the other thing I really liked about this pattern was actually you've got a QR code here on the front and that gives you access to a YouTube tutorial um, on how they make it. And you can have English subtitles playing on that. Now the English isn't, um, isn't awesome, but it's okay. Um, there are some very strange um, translations actually through it and you're like, say what? But it kind of makes sense. Um, and there are actually different options with this. Um, so you can actually do, um, and I appreciate you're um, quite far away from the picture here, but you've actually got the option to have the button placket on the front or the button placket on the back, which I think is such a lovely feature. Um, and um, yeah, it's just lovely. Uh, and then you've got, it's quite quite a high back, which I really like. It's not the same dip on it on both sides. So for example, the new Mabel, Mabel pattern by Tilly Buttons is actually low on both sides. And that's just not a style that suits me very much for various reasons. But, um, and then you've got these lovely sleeves, which are blousy, but not too blousy. So I hope the dog in the background isn't too loud. Obviously I'm sitting in the garden, which is why there's outside influences. I hope that's okay. But um, yes, the button placket is very cleverly constructed. So I look forward to sharing that with you. Now the instructions, it's a beautiful little booklet here. You've got, um, you've got French first and then English on each of the paragraphs, which makes perfect sense. You've got um, obviously the description there, then you've got the, um, some few tips before you get started. They give you advice on a glossary, which is very cool. And then the sizes here. So this is a size 34 or a UK um, 6, so a 48 or a UK 20. So not hugely size inclusive, um, but uh, there is a range there. And just to let you know, the bust, the smallest size bust is 31, um, 31 and a half inches, and the largest would be 42.5 inches. I opted to make, um, let me just see here a second. I opted to, to make the size 14. Um, that pretty much fits my measurements um, spot on and I'll show you in a moment um, how that came out and then it gives you a list of supplies recommended fabrics and it is recommended thin to medium fabrics um, of cotton poplin embroidered cotton tencel. Um I think something with a little bit of drape would be really nice but actually if you had something with a bit more structure like a cotton poplin then your sleeves are going to um, uh, keep that volume which is not something I'm a huge fan of as you may know from the past Seam allowances um, uh, are included on the pattern and you do not need to add them. For information, they are one centimetre on the whole garment except the hems, which are two centimetres. Then you've got the pattern layout, um, which is quite traditional there. And then um, some, really, some really lovely instructions with some diagrams, but obviously you've got the video to work off as well. So all in all, um, I really enjoy, enjoyed this. Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, and then you've got some um, some picture inspiration at the back. 
and then information on how to share on social media. Look at that lovely picture on the back, hugging the sewing machine. This is often how I feel about um, how I feel about uh, my my makes or sewing in general. Um, I you know that I'm a cut straight in kind of girl. I know there's some of you out there going. <gasps> In fact, I met Michelle at the, um, at the recent Stitch Fest and she said, oh, it just makes me hot just thinking about it. But I am a cut straight in. I sew for myself. I don't really sew for anybody else. I don't see my size changing um, any time soon. Maybe a slight variation to larger or smaller, but something I could work with. Um, and I just wanted to share with you really the simplicity of um, the pattern pieces because it is a, a raglan sleeve blouse. Let me show you this. Sorry, I hope it's not too too much rustling going on. Oh, that's sorry, that's a sleeve. I thought I was picking up the front. Oh, now that's just just flown off a bit. Won't my whip it up. Yeah, so this is the um so this is the front of the blouse. Um and actually um so it actually um so it is the front of the blouse and then you've got how the faux, uh, how the button placket is created is you um you um, <laughs> my head's fallen off um you basically sew sew the two front pieces together and then fold them fold the placket if you like to one side and then stitch it down on itself it's incredibly clever and the way that they make it so that you can make it reversible is the, on the pat, on the piece of, um, on the pattern piece here. You've got version without the button placket and version with the button placket, and that's how you would make it um, reversible. So obviously, if this is if you're not if you can have the button placket on the front, then you need to cut the piece that doesn't have the button placket. And if it was going to be so, if the button placket is going to be on the front. You, cut the piece with the button packet on the front. If this was going to, the button pack was going to be on the back, then you'd do the, the, the other version. I hope that made sense. Um, and then the back piece is, no, that's the, that's the sleeve. And then the back piece again, and this one is actually, um, this one is actually cut on the fold, I believe. I, I do apologise, I do apologise, both the front and the back are cut in the fold, I do apologise, um, and then you, you still, on the fold you create the seam and then sew the seam um, flat on itself, apologies for that, um, it is a little bit different the diagrams that they've got on here, so you've just got a sort of a um, representing a fold, so apologies, just to confirm both the front and the back are cut on the fold, which again it makes it super simple. Um, and it did take me a, a bit of a moment to realise, because it doesn't really explain in, in the instructions what the folds are for, but it, it would make sense to me because I've sewn a lot, but um, you could have easily cut out the front and the back with a button placket um, seam allowance in it, um, which would only have made the brows wider, but just a word of caution. So hence why I folded back. That, that would be the button placket piece, but I folded that away so when I cut it, um, it wasn't in the way. And then there, there you can see, that's the sleeve piece. It's a nice and simple, um, and obviously wide enough to be able to gather in at the wrist. Um, now the wrist feature, um, I, I, can't, I haven't got a close up of it um, actually. Oh, oh, I could just show you on the blouse, that would be a good idea. So this is my blouse, and I'm going to put it on in a moment so you can see it in a bit more detail. This is my blouse, I made it out of a Fabric Godmother fabric, um, actually it was a remnant. I didn't tell you that, did I, how much fabric it takes? <coughs> Bear with me. So on this pattern actually, um, in the listed supplies, you've literally got fabric which is 1 meter 40 and 1 meter 40 wide. Um, and basically saying that you can get all of the sizes out of that, so there isn't a minimum amount and a maximum amount. So if you did have um, a limited amount of fabric, you would need to lay your pattern pieces onto your fabric and see um, what sort of, um, how much fabric you would need. I did have, um, I think I had two metres of fabric and I thought I haven't got very much left, so not, not a usable amount of fabric left, just to give you an idea of that. Um, yes, yeah, so this, this is the, um, the Fabric Godmother uh, fabric, 
Um, and this is the, the button placket that I was referring to there, which is just so simply created. I love it. You sort of end up folding it um, on itself and stitching it down. The whole blouse is finished with a bias binding, which is again super easy to do. I chose to make my own, but you could buy um, that bias binding. And it was actually, let me take it off the hanger a second. It's actually the cuff detail that I wanted to specifically show you. And it's so simply created. You've got like a seven, a seven mil elastic there, um, which you cut to the widest part of your wrist. Um, so the blouse does sit about here, as you'll see in the photographs. And then you simply um, stretch the elastic, obviously the sleeve is in the flat, and you sew the elastic across, and then of course when you release it, it creates this beautiful gather, which is so simple, so, so simple. And then you've got a very simple um, uh, hem on the sleeve there. It is, for a first blouse, if this was your first blouse, you would be super pleased with the amount of style detail in there. Um, with the simplicity, absolutely superb. Let me stop the film here and I'll pop the blouse on so you get a sense of what it looks like. Okay, so here she is in person. Uh, I just really love this. Um, it's quite a different style of um, colour of fabric for me too. Um, I don't normally go for sort of a cream colour, um, but I, I really like it and I think it'll go with lots of things. But the blouse itself, a beautiful neckline. I think this is really um, flattering um, on someone of a chest size like myself. Having this area um, exposed I think is lovely. Um, it, it's just the most simple construction. So as I say, you cut the front on the fold and then you end up with this um, seam that you sew to the left um, and then um, stitch down. So these buttons are just for um, show. So if you're a sort of person that doesn't like buttons, this is the blouse, doing buttonholes, sorry, is the blouse for you. Um, this lovely, lovely sleeve detail. Now, as I said before, I'm the sort of person that sort of does this with my, with my sleeves, and therefore you end up losing the lovely cuff detail. So I think the next time I make one of these, I'm going to make it so that it sits around here that lovely section will sit um, sit um, on show and I won't have to move my sleeves around and so on. Um, I ended up um, taking a little bit off the, um, the length, so you can just see it comes to my um, sort of low hip, if you like, that's personal preference. I'm just gonna whip it joining me here now. Uh, that's personal preference um, to that. Um, but I actually ended up taking a good three or four inches off the length of this blouse. Um, um, yeah, so, but I absolutely love it and this cuff detail, genuinely one of my favourite things um, and the bias binding, a nice thin bias binding that I encourage you to make um, and all in all, very positive things to say about this. So as you can see, I've been joined by my whippet. <laughs> this is Alice down here, bless her. So we're in the summer house, as I mentioned, and um, she is a sun seeker, and also she is a sofa lover. So I have been completely, um, <laughs> completely taken over by Ali Boo. So, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed me describing the blouse to you. So in this section, I thought I'd share with you the second pattern that I chose to make from Jolly Lab, and that is the Innis trousers. Now they describe these as a cigarette um, trouser, um, and actually they've got a very similar silhouette to the Sew Over It Ultimate trousers, who I know many of the English viewers will be familiar with, except these have got the most fantastic pockets. They actually call them Italian pockets, um, and you've also got patch pockets on the back as well. Let me share with you the, um, the line drawing. Now, um, as you'll see, 
is actually it's actually quite a simple construction because it's a side zip so you've got no complicated fly to worry about um, and you've got the option there to have mid rise or what they call very high rise um, and also patch pockets or welt pockets on the back which is just such a lovely feature I chose to make the high um, the high waisted and for me they sit on my natural waist and I chickened out I'm afraid I went for patch pockets but that also is more of the style I was looking for um, they they come as long or seven eighths long um, now these are based on a height of 1.68 so that's quite a tall person I took loads off the length of this pattern. I'm just gonna put it out there. Loads is a technical term, obviously, but it was like a lot. So I would encourage you to hold the piece up against your body. Um, I sort of, well, I, I did eyeball it, to be honest. Um, and then as you'll see in the footage, I actually, um, I turned the hems up anyway and then stitched them down. Um, so I'll show you that in a moment. But it is such a lovely pattern. And again, there's a YouTube tutorial. Um, again, you can have the um, English subtitles on that really holds your hand through this process. But this lovely little booklet, once again, you've got um, the details on there. Um, you've got uh, a few tips before you start, a glossary, and then you've got fabric supplies here. So here, um, again, I made, uh, let me just check for you, uh, based on my waist measurements, again, would have been a size 14. So these trousers also in the same size range, um, they go from a size six to a size 20. Unfortunately, on this particular booklet, the size chart is incredibly faint. So you might have to look that up on the at the internet. Um, but yeah, and then in my size, I needed, um, Sorry, just bear with me. Uh, I needed one and a half meters of fabric. So not particularly fabric hugry again, which I think um, is fantastic. Um, just having a look at that. Yes, yeah, so one and a half meters, which is great. Um, and then you would need um, some material for the, uh, for the pockets if you didn't want to use the same fabric. And what's really lovely about these is these Italian pockets. Now, I wish I'd taken some footage whilst I was making them actually, but let me show you pages. I'm just gonna skip forward a few, few pages here. So Italian pockets have you have make a facing, um, both on the, uh, on the inside, on, on both of the edges of the pocket effectively, so that when you're looking at the pocket, you can see um, the original fabric um, and then if you are feeling inside the pocket on both sides, you've got a sliver of um, the original um, fabric. And then you could choose a lighter weight fabric for the pockets themselves. Now I've had these trousers on today, so um, apologies that they're a little bit creased, but let me show you. Here they are. <laughs> they are actually quite creased, sorry about that, but I have been wearing them and that's, that's what we want, isn't it? To be waking, we making wearable clothes. But this is the so the high waisted so the pocket itself oh, it's just so beautifully constructed and you actually um stitch down this top part of the pocket which i kind of missed when i made the trousers originally i put the trousers on i was like whoa this is a, this is a massive pocket and obviously they were bulging um but once you put the um the stitch on here um and this is this is what i mean by the italian pocket it's not an expression i'd heard before so you end up with this lovely facing on both sides and then obviously the pocket itself on the inside there. You've got a side, a side zip. Mine's not perfect, but it's okay for me. Um, I even had a moment where I pulled the zip up and the whole thing came off in my hand. Schoolboy error, which I was very frustrated about. Frustrated about. There are some things that you might prefer to do. So they just have you <coughs> um, overlock overlock the um the facing on the inside some people might might prefer to bias find that or you obviously could tuck that tuck that under for a slightly neater finish but again i wanted to make them true to the pattern themselves um some fabric here you might recommend uh, recognize um i love these i love the fact that it's a facing at the top i think that gives a beautifully clean finish and then on the back here um, you've got two patch pockets, I just did a very simple, I don't know if you can see that, a very simple design on the pocket um, and you stitch the facing down um, in all of the, um, 
in all of the pleats to, to create a lovely fit actually you have actually got um, pleats in the back here so um, for those of you who've got sway back adjustment and so on um, you'll be able to get a really good fit on these sorry the sun keeps going in and out so I hope you can see me okay but oh, they are just lovely so I chose to I chose to turn the the, um, the bottoms up and then and then actually stitch them down um, and for me that just gives it a, a little bit more of a, um, a casual look because um, I think these could very easily fall into a work camp and I didn't want to be as in work attire um, and I wanted to keep these very specifically separate um, and be able to wear these um, for casual only. If you've not made trousers before, I would absolutely say to you these this would be a great first pair. Do not be scared of the pocket construction, it came together incredibly well. Um, but also when I make clothes like these, um, it does remind me how far I've come in my sewing journey because I put these together without really batting an eyelid and had my zip played ball, um, I would have made these quite quickly. But once you have constructed the whole of the trousers, including the zip, and then your zip head comes off in your hand, unpicking all of that and redoing the zip, it's frustrating and quite time consuming. But actually it's not time consuming when you are making it. So I am so pleased with both of these um, patterns and I definitely could see more Jolie Loud patterns coming my way. Um, yeah, there's so many to choose from. Uh, would have shown you a screenshot. Hopefully through, uh, I'll put some footage in now um, of me actually wearing these items, um, both my, my blouse and the trousers. Um, haven't put the two on together if I'm honest. Um, I'm not sure why I haven't done that. Not, not for footage purposes anyway. But I hope you enjoyed seeing that and it's giving you some inspiration. Um, this film's not sponsored or um, endorsed by Jolie Love in any way. It's just me sharing my genuine um, thrill at finding a new, new pattern company and trying something different. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to give me a, a like and a subscribe. Um, it's great to have so many new subscribers here. Um, and yeah, do subscribe so you can t continue to follow me on my sewing journey. Lots more adventures to come. So until next time, everybody, stay safe and well.